Hi. So yeah, I haven't been doing a lot of movie reviews because MCO is back. We're in the third phase now. Cinemas are closed, but nonetheless, managed to finish Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. It's done. Yes, I know I'm four years late, but you know, this pandemic has allowed me to play back. Or catch up some games. So since I recently finished Breath of the Wild, I thought it'd be fun to just recap on what are the best games to play during the pandemic. But keep in mind that these are my personal favorites. There are so many games, but I can only name a few that really, really took the time. Also, the games are in no particular ranking order. So let's go. So since I started with Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, let's start with this game first. For the record, I have not played any Zelda games at all. Breath of the Wild was my very first Zelda game, and I have to say this game is a masterpiece. I never knew how much I would enjoy playing this game. My favorite aspect of this game is that when you play in Hyrule. It's so relaxing. Immediately when you wake up from the chamber, you go out and you see the world, the nature, the birds chipping. Even though you do have a mission, you know, to do this and that, you can literally do anything in this game. You can go unlock towers in another region that you're not supposed to go to yet. You can go collect gears, collect coral seeds, and you know, I really took my time just enjoying the world, going to the mountains, swimming, gliding, and it doesn't really rely on a lot of music soundtrack. The nature around the place wherever you're in is the soundtrack itself, and that's, I guess that's what makes it very relaxing. All in all, it took me about five months to complete the game. I unlocked the shrines, all of them, all 120. Some of them are really fun to do, but some of them, you know, they just. Uh... But yeah, anyway, great game. Highly recommended to play in the pandemic. Second game that I want to talk about is Pokemon Sword. Actually, I will say that it's the DLCs, the Owls of Armor and the Tundra. Yeah, those two DLCs are what really kept the game going. If you're just gonna play uh, the base Pokemon Sword alone, there isn't much to do and you know, there's not much replayability. Speaking of replayability, for me, the best part about the DLC is the uh, restraint sparring in the dojo. So in this mode, you are challenged to create a monotype team according to whatever type you're playing. So let's say you have chosen normal type, right? So you have to choose all the normal type Pokemon and there's only three. It can be like a dual type as well. And you're up against trainers in a row. You can only heal two times in the whole uh, stretch. Also the fact that your Pokemon and their Pokemon are level cap at 50. So it's all even level playing field. So yes, I have completed all the 18 types monotype challenge and I'm pretty much done with the game. Actually Game Freak is very easy to have a challenge mode for your fans who have been asking for this for many years. You just need to put a level cap of 50 and all set man. Also I spend way too much time playing on this game. 900 plus hours man. Moving on. We have South Park The Stick of Truth is an old game but I've always wanted to try it and I play it on my Switch. I had a blast playing this game. I think for an RPG game it's really interesting and unique. The way they, how they put the classes for your characters and your friends. But yeah, you know, if you're a fan of Soft Park and you love satire jokes, this is the game for you and I had a blast playing it. It's also worth mentioning that the sequel, Fractured But Whole, is a pretty okay game for me. This one is based on the superhero genre spoof. I think it was fine, but I find the stake of truth a more 
enjoyable game. Alright, so I've mentioned all the Switch games, now it's time to move on to the PC. So the first PC game that I super enjoy is definitely uh, Doom Eternal. It was released last year, just in time for the MCO, had a super blast, and you know it's the type of game that after a long day of work, you just want to sit down and just go around killing demons <laughs> with heavy metal songs to get you pumped up. At first glance, Doom Internal looks like a nonsensical, a brainless shooter game, but it's not. This game demands skill and yeah, if you're not careful, you might die. Die so many times. I've played part 1 already, I really enjoyed that game. I've yet to play part 2, so yeah, I guess I can play that next. Another game that really kept me occupied during the pandemic was none other than The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. So here's a funny story. Actually, I got the game about 2 years ago. It was on the discount, super cheap, got it on Steam, but left it in the library for quite some time. Then suddenly when the MCO kicked in last year in March, it's like, wow, like I have so much time now and I guess I can try out The Witcher 3. Like Breath of the Wild, The Witcher 3 is also an open world RPG game. I think it took me about 9 to 10 months just to finish the game and that's including the DLCs. DLCs are really great by the way. So yeah, I really took my time, you know, just collecting the gears, finishing side quests, trying to open every damn treasure I can find. <laughs> it's also worth mentioning that it's my first time playing the Witcher franchise and yeah, I really enjoyed the characters. Really great stuff, so highly recommended to play during the pandemic. Last but not least, the other game that I truly enjoyed playing during the pandemic is none other than Halo the Master Chief Collection. So here's the thing, I played Halo 1 and 2 many years ago when I was in secondary school. Then Halo 3 came but it was only exclusive to the Xbox which does not exist in Malaysia. So yeah, from Halo 3 onwards, I've never got to play a single Halo game until last year. So when I heard about the Master Chief Collection arriving on Steam, I was super glad because I got to play Halo 3, the spin-offs or the ST, Halo Reach which is my favorite among the series I think, Halo 4 and yeah like also get this, on Steam combining all these Halo games is only 65 ringgit. Do you realize how amazingly cheap that is? It's a must buy man. So there you go guys, these are the games that really made my time during the pandemic. I know the pandemic has been hard on a lot of people, but some are thriving under it, especially the introverts. If you haven't played any of this game, why not just give it a try to, you know, occupy yourself during the pandemic. And what other games do you highly recommend to play in this period? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm Abel, I'm signing out and I'll see you hopefully in the next movie review. Um, yeah. Okay, bye.